I'm going to play a little video over here at space.com about the glaciers and the melting of the ice <clears throat> that wants to be blamed upon climate change, global warming. At the end of this video, you're going to hear the narrator say this is cyclical. That's what I've been trying to say all along. And here we go. We are flying through a massive canyon of ice. And it's not some virtual reality game. This is a 3D map of a real place. This vast crevice cuts through a huge floating plain of ice in West Antarctica. It's called the Pine Island Glacier Ice Shelf. And what you're seeing is the first stage in the birth of a huge iceberg. It'll be about 350 square miles. That's about 15 times the size of Manhattan. NASA scientists discovered this icy rift in a kind of happy accident. Two weeks ago, we, we had a, uh, another mission over the Iron Glacier, and when looking out of the window of the aircraft, we noticed a fairly large uh, crack in the uh, ice shell. This has happened on a semi-regular basis in both the, in the Arctic and the Antarctic, but it's still a fairly large event. So what we do is we modify the existing flight plan to add about an extra half an hour to the flight, in order to get mainly a minor photographic map of the exact shape, depth of the rub, uh, and the width of it, see how it's developing over time. Scientists made this animation from photographs and topographic data taken on that flight. Giant icebergs break off and float away pretty regularly, not every five to ten years, depending on the ice shelf. It's a process called calving. Satellites caught this ice shelf calving giant icebergs in 2001, and again in 2007. But nobody had ever observed or measured this process at such close range. A lot of times when you're in science, you, you don't get a chance to catch the big stories as they happen, because you're not there at the right place at the right time, but this time we were. And these are discrete events in time, they process to take place over a period of just a few weeks, and, uh, and we just happen to be here at the right window of time to catch it. In these images, the icy rift stretches for more than 18 miles. It's about 240 feet across, 820 feet at its widest point, and it's almost 200 feet deep. But that's actually only a scratch in the Pine Island Glacier ice shelf, which is enormous, 1,200 square miles and 1,600 feet thick. Scientists have observed that the whole Pine Island Glacier is losing mass faster than many scientists thought was possible, and the movement of the entire glacier is also speeding up. When the glacier speeds up, it moves more and more ice off of Antarctica and into the ocean. That raises sea levels, well, everywhere. In fact, some consider Pine Island Glacier to be ground zero for investigations into why West Antarctica's ice is disappearing. But scientists say the birth of the ice shelf's newest iceberg by itself isn't cause for alarm. Really, it's part of a totally natural cycle. And when this giant iceberg does break away, at least the satellites and the scientists will be around to see it. For our amazing planet, I'm Andrea Mustaine. Now, we just heard her say it was part of a cycle. And what did she say? That's what the scientists said. Not the people that harp on the global warming, the people that are actually... Well, you've seen them flying over and you just happen to be in the right place at the right time and they got to watch something, they're usually not in the right place at the right time. All our protective covering around this planet has been manipulated by man. 
and sciences developed by man, one of which is heart. What does it say right here? Experiments with the harp, ionospheric what? Heater. Heater. Heat, melting ice. Heat, making things hotter. And you can read just about how it works, what they say about it over here. We've been through this before, but Obama's pumping his global warming crap again. And he's going to push in probably some new form of taxation on the companies. Saying that that is the main source of it, which pollution is not good, of course. But he's not making any reference to harp doing anything. And it is an atmospheric heater. ELF, generating ELF and VLF waves, called modulated heating. Modulating the conductivity of the ionosphere at those frequencies. Keep going all the way down here. It tells you, instead of modulating the power of the HF array, and that's not using it at its maximum power, geometric modulation relies on leaving the array on, but moving the beam across the sky at the ELF frequency. These are examples where the beam can sweep a line or circle in the sky, and each portion of the ionosphere is effectively being heated. Each portion is being heated at the ELF frequency. The heated area is larger, which results in larger OL, overall ELF power. And thus phasing between each heated region, which can impart some directionality to the radiated ELF. Most of the radiated ELF wave energy is confined where? Below the ionosphere, some of it leaks out onto the magnetosphere, where it can be detected by satellites as the meter, and under special conditions be guided along ducts, which are irregularities in the plasma density that follow the Earth's magnetic field lines. While the waves are propagating in these ducts, they're amplified by interaction with electrons in the magnetosphere. The amplified wave can then be detected in the opposite hemisphere at the magnetic conjugate point of heart in the Southern Pacific Ocean. This figure illustrates the setup. So that's a pretty good little idea portrayed of what they're doing. There's much, much more into it, but well, here's a little Dis disadvantage of using HARP instead of conventional ELF VLF transmitter is HARP's dependence on the auroral electrojet. Naturally varies in intensity and can cause the generated ELF to also vary in intensity. However, this correlation is not direct, and surprisingly strong ELF signals can be detected even when the electrojet is negligible. Magnetometers which measure the Earth's magnetic field and can detect disturbances caused by overhead currents are a simple proxy for electrojet intensity. Figure 5 shows an example where the sig ELF signals are strong during a weak electrojet. And then when the electrojet becomes stronger, the ELF detected at Chistocena only becomes slightly stronger and at Juno becomes weaker. Discovering how natural conditions affect HARP's ability to generate ELF is a key for determining the practicality of using modulated heating as an ELF source. I keep trying to say it over and over and over again. It's doing stuff like this. 
that's taken a natural cyclical process of ice melting, of glaciers breaking off, drifting out to the ocean. That's that's a that's fresh water. Fresh a lot of fresh water, quite a bit of fresh water being introduced into the salt water. And you'll end up lowering the salinity of the ocean. And you don't want to do that. Now, there is a speech, and I've heard it, where they're they're talking about what I made one of my last videos about is they're not shutting heart down they're just going to transfer it's just going to give it to a different entity and it's still going to be operational and in this press conference this speech you can hear the man stating about how they controlled the ionosphere with the use of heart. So it's not you and me breathing, it's not our cars, it's not the animals. Those are all excuses. And when you hear Obama breaking out his, his little theme of global warming or the Al Gores, the people that stand and make trillions of bucks if legislation is passed, and they set up their little carbon cap and trading and start having their little Ponzi scheme and that. It's all about money. It's about passing a buck. Because we'll end up paying for the for it in the long run. Us little guys, us little people, and the products that we purchase will pay more. Because any businesses that have to go into this carbon cap and trading and buy the credits, they're going to make that money up from you and me. And they're just going to use the excuse of global warming to pass the buck off so that they don't admit doing things like this are the actual one, just one little piece of the actual truth about what's going on. Climate change is normal. It is not abnormal. Explain the little ice age then. No cars, no factories, no nuclear bombs being tested, no harp ionospheric heater back then. No nothing. But yet, it was cooler, and that doesn't mean it was just snow covered all the time when you say little ice age. Oh, the planet goes through cycles like this, which is normal. But when you're going through cycles and you got evil people trying to control the planet for their purposes, then you're amplifying something that is normal with the planet. And you're intensifying something that is a normal cycle of the planet. But don't get caught up in the global warming lie. Oh, I know you can figure things out. All you have to do is think about it. And you'll be able to get it.